welcome back to Storytime with Lynn. Today I'll be reading The Foster Dragon by Steve Herman. Hello there, everybody. It's me, your old friend Drew, the kid who has a dragon by the name of Diggory Doo. I've told you lots of adventure stories we have had. Most of them are funny, but a few of them are sad. Once there was a story I told you of how it came to be, that Diggory lost someone he loved and came to live with me. The man that Diggory lived with was old and passed away, so Diggory's life was changed forever on that day. This is how it happened. Have you heard of foster care? That's how Diggory came to me, so listen as I share. It's an extraordinary story, and you'll learn something new as I tell you about the life of my dragon, Diggory Doo. When Diggory's loved one passed away, poor Diggory was alone. He needed a new family, for he was not full grown. Baby dragons are like kids with needs that must be met. They need someone to cook their meals and tuck them into bed. They need someone to help them dress each morning when they wake and take them to the doctor when they have a tummy ache. If you think about it for a bit, I'm sure that you'll agree that baby dragons need a family just like you and me. A lady called a social worker came to Diggory's aid she took him to another home, and that was where he stayed. These are temporary families for kids with nowhere else to go. They are known as foster homes, in case you didn't know. The social worker searched and searched. That's how she came to find. The perfect home for Diggory Doo just happened to be mine. I was so excited when I heard my parents say, we're going to get a dragon. Oh, what a happy day. Although my parents cared for him, Diggory would get mad. He'd throw a tantrum and he'd yell, you're not my mom and dad. Then he'd cry himself to sleep as if his heart would break. Have you ever heard a dragon cry? What a noise they make. At school, he'd get in trouble for not acting like he should. The teacher told him Diggory do try harder to be good. She was very patient when Diggory kicked a chair. Diggory had no friends, but he said he didn't care. We all tried to help him. Dad said, Diggory needs some time. I am sure eventually our dragon will be fine. I told Diggory Do, perhaps it might help your healing if you just talk it out and tell me what you're feeling. At first, he hesitated, for Diggory felt he must be sure before he shared his heart, I'm someone he can trust. I waited for a little while till he was ready then. He told me of some other foster homes where he had been. In one foster home was a boy named Brad, who only got to see his mom once a week, which made him really sad. She promised him that soon they'd be together once again, and if he'd just be patient, they could both be happy then. I also met a girl named Kim, whose father went away. She's now in a foster home, where she will have to stay. I am one of many kids who live in foster care. Our future is unsure, and it just seems so unfair. Since I no longer have a family, grown-ups are assigned to make decisions for me. And though they are kind, it's simply not the same as having parents of my own. I guess that it will be this way until I am full grown. One grown up is a lawyer. 
He goes with me to court. He tells the judge about me and gives a full report of what he thinks I need, and the two of them agree on where I ought to live and what is best for me. I also have a therapist. I see her once a week. We visit in her office where I get a chance to speak. She tells me it is good for me and helps me if I share all about my feelings and my life in foster care. There's a social worker assigned to help me too. You met her when she brought me here to live with all of you. But now that I am here, I'm afraid to make new friends. For if I have to move again, that's how a friendship ends. Sometimes it makes me angry. That's why I misbehave. Other times I'm frightened and I struggle to be brave. It's hard to be a foster child like me and Kim and Brad. We don't know what is ahead and miss the life we had. I patted Diggory on the head and said, do not despair. I know it's hard for you and your friends who live in foster care. You might wonder what your future holds, but try to understand that these new grown-ups in your life will lend a helping hand. Diggory dried his tears and smiled. He said, I know it's true, for if it weren't for foster care, I'd never have met you. I know that they will also help my friends like Kim and Brad to find a home that's right for them so they won't feel so sad. Now you know the story of Diggory Doo's unhappy past, but you'll be glad to know that I have saved the best for last. We've adopted Diggory Doo, and that means he will never, ever have to go away but live with us forever. Diggory Doo and I now share a father and a mother. He's more than just a dragon to me, and Diggory is my brother. He's making friends and fitting in much better than before. We have lots of other books to tell you even more. Thank you so much for joining me today on Storytime with Lynn, reading The Foster Dragon by Steve Herman.